Hi, welcome to In the Art Studio with Ms. Lundgren. That's me, your host today, and your teacher that misses you all so, so much. I'll never be able to put into words how much I miss you. It's so much lonelier working with just one person, my daughter Ingrid here. Um, today we are going to do a project that I have had a lot of fun over the years doing. And I'd like to think that you will get to make this and share it with people that you have loved, just like I've done. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of collage, a lot of bit of cutting and gluing, and we're gonna make some uh, Japanese-inspired koi gift tags. These are really fun to use to put on presents. They're fun to put on a little homemade bouquet that you pick in your yard or in the park. They can hang off of any knob, doorknob, windowsill. You can give them to your grandparents, your aunt and uncle, anyone. I put these on almost every present that I give and um, I like to think they're hanging in other people's homes that I love as well. I was thinking for this week, it might be fun to hang a bunch of these out in front of your house. You could even put a message on the back. Maybe a thank you to all the people that are still working in grocery stores and healthcare and the people that pick up our trash and deliver our mail and all the people. You might even have someone in your family that is still really out in public and working to keep the rest of us healthy and safe. So this could be a thank you card to anyone. It could be an I love you card to anyone. Um, let's get started. I'll show you how we do this. Welcome to the art studio, my number one BFF over vacation and through life. My daughter Ingrid is here today. Ingrid has never made one of these, I guess. Hard to believe. I used to do these all of the time. Maybe it was before you were born. What you're going to need today, a pair of scissors. Kids' scissors will do. These are adult scissors. Uh, a pencil. A glue stick or some form of glue. I like glue stick just because it's neat and tidy. And you are going to need a piece of paper. We're going to use one piece of paper to make our pattern because you might want to make multiple versions of these. We're going to have one piece of paper. This is the thing that you might not have at home, but you might want to do something called improvise, which means when sometimes you don't have something, you have to figure out something else to use. Improvising. Artists do it all the time. It just so happens that I'm an art teacher and I love paper and I love origami paper. So I've got loads of different colored, beautiful paper that I've collected over a lifetime. You might not have origami paper, but you might have wrapping paper. You might have a pretty bag. I don't know where this bag came from, but I saved it. Artists are also resourceful. We like to reuse things that we find interesting. Um, you can use anything that has a pattern. You might just use, you could use a magazine page. You could, draw on, yeah. you could draw on your own paper and make your own patterns, absolutely. You can also get this uh, origami paper online. It's pretty inexpensive. Actually, origami paper goes all the way from very inexpensive to very expensive. There are some really beautiful papers out there that people are making still today. Uh, origami paper is from Japan. This little pack that I have is from Daiso. Daiso is Japan's 99 cent store, and you can get really great paper there when this quarantine lifts. You can go get your own. Um, you so there's a, online. you can order it online as well. So I have a nice stack of paper, and that paper is going to be used to cut out fish scales on my koi. Koi is like a Japanese um, fish. We see it a lot in Japanese artwork. And uh, I have cut out all different colors of fish scales, and I've cut out some shapes for the body and for the eyes. And uh, let's start out first, though, with the basic form of our koi. Okay, let's get started. So what I like to do 
Any kind of paper will do. It could be old notebook, lined paper, it could be whatever you want. You get to decide how big you want your koi to be. I'm going to make mine, I'm going to start with just a basic line, and I'm going to make a form kind of like that, okay? Now if you want to do a little trick so that your, your um, koi turns out evenly, you can fold it in half, you can draw your shape, And then cut it out. Now I forgot the tail. Totally. You're going to have to experiment with what works for you. There isn't, you're going to just make your own fish pattern, but I'll show you how my pattern works. So my pattern's going to look like that. There's the fold. It's almost like when we practice doing Valentine's. Let me show you. So I'm going to cut along this. And Ingrid, I'll give you your own, just a sec. I'm going to cut along that, and we'll see how it looks. And yours might, they can all look different. I made up my own shape. It's an original, just like you. Yikes. Don't like that. I'm going to turn mine down a little bit. I'm not crying about it. I'm going to make mine a little skinnier. That looked like a whale. It's supposed to look like a koi. Uh-oh, we might have to make a commercial break. I think I just goofed this up. Uh. What? Awkward. I'm going to try again. Okay, last chance because this guy's getting smaller and smaller. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to get this. It's been a while since I've made the koi. You don't remember me making these, Ingrid. Might have been during my puppet time, it was. Before I was working at Montlake and had some extra time to do art, and that's what I did. I'd sit at this very table and figure out patterns for things. Okay, that's a little closer. Okay, so next I'm going to take this pattern and I'm going to trace it on to a heavier piece of paper because like I said, I want to make a bunch of these and I don't want to have to go through that struggle of cutting and designing another pattern. When we get to sewing, you will realize the beauty of patterns. It makes you just turn into a machine. You can just make multiple copies of things and that way when you have 200 people that you love and want to send a card to, you will have them in your stockpile. Okay, so there's one fish. I started on the edge of the paper so I'm not wasting a bunch. I'm going to continue tracing these out. I'm going to have Ingrid make her own pattern and we will meet back in 10 minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. Hi, we're back. So both Ingrid and I have a pattern that we used. I just used an old um, cereal box to make my pattern. So this is uh, heavier cardboard and I can reuse this a bunch of times, make as many as I like. I traced it on to a piece of blue paper and Ingrid traced hers onto a heavy piece of white paper, okay? And actually she just used the cover of our old watercolor paper. She's gonna glue on this side and then she'll have a nice clean white side to leave her message. Okay. So let's get started. What does this entail? Scissors. Some kind of pretty paper, whether you make it yourself 
or whether you have some wrapping paper or anything lying around. It just so happens that I have a bunch of pre-cut fish scales. I could have given these to you maybe next year. Um, I have collected paper over the years and I kind of have it even separated. This is one of the few things in my life that is organized. I have all the warm colors here along with gold and uh, some metallics and then I have my cooler colors, my blues and my greens in this one. And gold. And I just kind of keep them stacked up. This is something that uh, if you have some time to do, you can really start organizing your art supplies around the house so that it's easy on a rainy day just to pop your boxes out and get started. The fish scale is basically the shape of a horseshoe. You know what a fish scale looks like. I'm going to make mine about this big. No need to draw these out. You can freehand cut them. And if you want to save time, you can fold it in two so that you're cutting out two at a time because you're going to need a lot to cover your fish. I would start out with a handful. So cut your origami scales and leave a little extra because we're going to want to put some type of face on and we might want to put some paper over our fin to add and uh, some eyes and mouth. So we're going to get started just by cutting our fish scales first. Okay? Get your fish scales cut and we'll meet back. <music> Okay, how was that? Challenging, yes. The cool thing is, is you can improvise, make up your own ideas, make up your own pattern for scales. You might have watched how we made our scale patterns. We overlapped, that means one laying on top of the other, starting with the tail and then going down toward the head. Ingrid, hold yours up. Yours is really cool. So here are our tags. Hopefully you have one of these guys at home. If you don't, you can just use a pencil and poke a hole. I like to put a hole right on the mouth. It reminds me of the koi's that we have hanging in the art studio. And if you have some kind of cord from a gift bag or whatever, a ribbon, it really looks cool to just pop it through here. Make a loop and then pull the two tails through and there you have it. A really fun tag. I think we're going to hang these out in our tree. Maybe we'll make a wish um, or a blessing for someone that walks by. They can read something on our coin. But they can't touch it. They definitely should not touch it, but that's just a rule that we've practiced for many years in the art studio. Be sure to put your caps on your glue stick. Pick up all your little scraps. The neat thing about this is it creates a lot of scraps that you can use for other things. That's what I saved my little boxes for. We want to thank you for joining us. Ingrid, I thank you for joining. And we will see you on the next episode of In the Art Studio. Bye-bye.